Okay, we've seen uh, that if we have a vector r of t over a given range of t values, the tip of that vector will typically trace out a curve. The derivative of r with respect to t is a vector tangent to the curve. If t is interpreted as time, the magnitude of this vector is going to be the velocity. And we have at least two different ways of representing our r of t vector. One, the way we started with x of ti plus y of tj, where here's our x and here's our y. If we just multiply x of t times i plus y of t times j, we get a vector here and a vector here that add up to this vector. Alternatively, we can express r of t as a scalar function. I'm going to use little r of t to avoid confusion between the scalar and the vector function. Uh, so we can write that as a scalar function, little r of t times u sub r. And we've seen the reasons for that. So our r of t function, whatever that function is, that traces out this curve as a function of the parameter t, can be expressed in either of two ways. And which way we use is usually determined by convenience of the situation. Now you might think that the uh, xi plus yj notation being more familiar and apparently simpler is the one we would always use, but that's not going to be the case. We'll see an example here uh, where it's much more convenient to use the polar form. Now in the polar form, dr dt is the derivative with respect to t of r of t u sub r, and by the product rule, that's going to be the derivative of this times this, plus the derivative of this times this. So that uh, the derivative of our vector function is going to be expressed r prime u r plus r of t times u r prime. Now, uh, r of prime of t u r is just written this way, and u sub r prime is equal to what? u sub theta times d theta dt, as we've recently seen. So that our derivative is going to look like this. Now in a minute we're going to want to worry about what the second derivative looks like, but right now here's our derivative. And this is a theta here, it's kind of, maybe doesn't look much like a theta. Okay, so again, our choice is a choice of convenience. Now we're going to illustrate a case where the convenient choice is going to be the uh, polar representation, the representation in terms of u sub r and u sub theta. Here's the situation. We're going to say uh, we have the sun and a planet. The planet is moving with some velocity v in some direction. Now, the sun and the planet attract one another gravitationally, so the planet is going to feel a force that's directed toward the sun. Now that force is in the direction of the radial vector. It's in the direction opposite the radial vector, but it's still parallel to the radial vector, and that's where this uh, radial notation is going to become very convenient. So since it, the planet exert, experiences a force toward the sun, it has an acceleration toward the sun. We know that acceleration is the second derivative of our position function. <coughs> Excuse me. By Newton's law of universal gravitation, which you're familiar with if you've learned some physics, and if not, uh, it's just a rule that we're going to use, uh, the magnitude of the acceleration is equal to uh, g, universal gravitational constant, multiplied by, multiplied by m, and capital M is going to be the mass of the sun, uh, and we divide that by r squared, where r is the distance of the planet from the sun. Now the law of universal gravitation uh, says that m times your r of t function, second derivative, which is uh, second derivative of the r of t function is the acceleration function, is equal to big G times big M times little m over r squared where r is again the distance uh, of the planet from the sun, big G 
and big M are universal gravitational constant mass of the sun. Little m would be the mass of the earth and we see that's going to divide out. And what we're going to have is we're going to have uh, that uh, this force function, because this is the net force on the planet, is going to be equal to the negative of this multiplied by our good old friend, the u sub r vector. So magnitude of, well, the net force is mass times the second derivative of the position function, and that's going to be uh, negative of this expression, which does involve r, multiplied by the u sub r vector. Now, the magnitude of a is gm over r squared. The direction of a is toward the sun. So we're going to say that a, which is our r double prime, is then equal to negative gm over r squared times our u sub r vector. And this allows us a particularly simple way to analyze the motion of a planet, given its distance from the sun and its velocity and its mass and the mass of the sun, we can solve this equation and get the equation of motion for the planet about the sun.